Hello everyone and welcome back to our JRPG series. In the previous episode we started work on our item window, allowing us to use items in the middle of battle. Now in this part we're actually going to implement this window into our scene with our battle HUD, allowing us to choose an item from the different categories and choose allies or enemies to target with them. So let's get started. So much like the magic window, we're going to put this onto our, Vic, our character's unit battle HUD. And so we find this here, like so. And there's the magic window there, it's just invisible, obviously, because it's not seen at the start of the game. So likewise, we're going to put in our item window. And that's going to go in just there. We're going to tick size to content, fill it up like that. Now I may make this a little bit wider too, um, so we'll untick that and just drag it down actually, like so. Oh, I just realised we've got still has it see, has it saying select spell. We'll change that in a minute. So this we want to put in the place of the magic window. Um, in fact, what I might actually do is just resize the um, magic window, to be the same size as this. So that's three six six. So we're gonna copy that. I'm going to click on there and paste that there. And magic window, I'm going to copy the size Y and paste that on here. And everything else is going to be the same from the magic window. So the anchors we can copy here, we can copy that and paste that. And we can do the positioning as well. So magic window, copy, paste, and and copy Y and paste that there. Okay, and we've got the alignment as well to do. So I'm going to right click, copy the alignment, and put that on here too. Okay, so there is our select items window. Now, for this, um, we want it to animate exactly the same as a magic window. So we make a new animation, and this is going to be show item window. And show item window is going to have the exact same animations. So we're going to do add track and choose the item window. And then from there, I'm going to go to the uh, magic, show magic menu and in. And oh, we're going to expand this open a little bit. Go to the action uh, for the magic window and select all of this and copy it. We go to show item window and I'm going to right, right click on the item window here and paste that in. It does exactly the same movements. And I'm going to do the exact same for the action commands as well. So I'm going to copy the action commands. So take this and copy and go to item window. And we're going to paste that in there. And it's action commands. So now this animation is the same as the magic window one. OK. All that's left to do then is to make it so that the item window its opacity at the start it's set to zero it is excellent um oh is it let's have a look yep okay we're happy with that compile and save uh oh wait it isn't there we go i knew it wouldn't be change that to zero there we go compile and save Okay, so uh, that's our animation done. So now we need to make it so when we click the item button, this does this animation. So this will be handled by the action window. So we just go to the action window. And on here, we've got our attack and magic have their events. You can see here. We're going to do the same for items. So in the item button, click on add uh, on clicked. And this is going to be pretty much the same as you see here. So we're going to call these commands here. So we we'll make a new one, and we call this one Show Item Menu. We we'll drag that out and call it. File and save. And then go back to your Battle HUD and go to the graph. And on here you'll find uh, at the top here on the construct we are doing the bindings for the action command to show Magic Menu and show targets. So we're going to do that again. Drag out, find event. To show item menu and we're going to create a matching event for this so create event and from the drop down choose create a matching event and there is show item menu 
and this is going to work pretty much the same as the magic window so go to show you magic window we're going to have the play animation then we can set up the bindings for when we chose an item do this stuff and then this stuff so let's do the animations first so show item window get and do play animation forward Plug that in we're then going to take the item window and we're going to bind event um go to bind it. oh no not that one sorry from uh item window there we go bind event the item chosen Plug that in. and we also want to bind the event for when it has the return clicked as well so bind event to return selected So the return selected is easy enough to do. We won't do that just yet. We'll just do focus on the item chosen event. The item chosen event is doing similar to what the item ability chosen is doing. It's telling it to show the targets and set the ability we want to do there on the target window. Now the target window is also going to have to have the item we want to send over to the uh, target. So we're going to go over to our target window. Go to the graph. And on here, new variable. And this will be item. And it'll be set to the item base class. Like so. Okay. And I'm also going to send over the item type as well. So uh, variable here, item type. Well, actually, in fact, we can do it all here. We don't have to write about it here. We can delete that. Okay. Now, the main thing is that we got the item here. So we go back to the uh, battle HUD. And we're going to go down to bind event item chosen. Custom event, and we we'll call this one item chosen. And from there, we're going to do the show targets, and then we're going to take the target window, get, and then set item. And then plug that into there. We then want to tell it to do here, we tell it to populate the target list. Okay, then we've got the event on return selected, and very similarly, it's going to be the same as this where it plays animation in reverse. So we're going to take the show um, item menu and oh, we can make the event first, custom event, and this will only be um, um, item return. And from the show item window, we're going to plug this into a play animation reverse. And that reverse the animation back to the start. Okay, so all that's left to do is to populate the targets based upon what item type it is. So we're going to go to the target window and go to the populate target list function. And on here, we need to check whether or not we're using items here. So we're going to uh, take a look at this here. And at the moment, we're checking the ability and what class it is to determine what one we want to use enemy units or party units. So for this, actually, I'm going to break this into another part of the populate target function. So here, we're going to drag out ability, do get, and convert that to validate get. I'm then going to put in a sequence node here. So the first thing it's going to do is going to check the ability. If the ability is valid, then it's going to carry on and set who should be using which one, enemy units or party units. So we're going to make a local variable. We're going to call this one use enemy units and this would be a boolean and by default we'll make it uh, make it true so on ability if it is valid we're then going to do basically what you see here so we're going to take this and cut it and put this in here test class is the ability and valid class is that one like so and for this one, we want to make it when it's not equal to. So we don't want that not there. So if it's equal to black magic, we want to keep use enemy units as true. Else it'll be false. So we're going to set this here to match that. So it's true. Use enemy units becomes true, which it is. It's false. It becomes false. Simple as that. 
The next thing we're going to do on the sequence is check now for item. So we'll do the item. Get. And we're going to right click and convert the validate get. That in there. We then want to get the items type. So get uh, type, uh, get, uh, sorry, class defaults. And from the item details here, we're going to break. And we're going to hide them all except for the type. And with the type here, we need to know what it's doing. So we're going to do switch on, i.e., item type. Plug that into is valid. And for each one of these, we're going to just use set enemy units here. We're going to use another one. We're going to set one of them to true. And then we hook up which ones we want to do which. So restorative is going to use friendly units. Supportive is going to use friendly units. Combative is going to use enemy units. And the crafting, junk, and key item are not going to be usable in the engine at all. So here we can just leave these alone and it'll ignore them. Okay. And then on the sequence, we'll add another pin and we'll drag that down to the clear children. And that goes through here. Then on the select node, we're going to drag out our use enemy units. Pile. And this will actually be the other way around. So that will go there and units go there. So enemy units must be going into true. We compile and save that. Uh, and that's that bit done. So one thing to note here is we want to make sure that abilities are being and items are being set and reset accordingly. So it shouldn't cause an issue, but just to make sure, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the event graph, and when you click on return button, we're going to clear the ability and item. So take ability, set, nothing, and item, reset to nothing. And hit compile and save. And that is it. So now we've clicked the button, it'll clear those values. So when you, if you were to go, let's say, into magic, select a magic, and then cancel that and go back into item, it's not going to get an issue there. It's going to keep it uh, consistent. So we can hit save on that and close that. So now on the at unit battle HUD here, this item chosen will populate the target list according to the item that we've got selected. So let's save this and let's go into our player controller here and to test this out. So here we need to set up what items we have on here. So I'm just going to click on plus here and we need an item to give it. So let's create an item. So item base, I'm going to create a child of this and this one would be a potion. So item underscore potion. And we'll just get the name of it and set up those details. So potion. Uh, description. Um, heal the target for a small amount of health and the type is restorative the cell value doesn't bell value doesn't really matter too much at the moment so we can do like uh, 100 and 300 and compile that and save that and i'm going to go to my player controller here and set up to use item potion and let's say we have 10 of them hit compile and save that and then close this so let's test this and see if this displays in game correctly. So here I've got items. Ah. One little issue I forgot to do. When I added the, the item window to the widget for the battle HUD, I need to make sure that I've got the item window set to uh, non hit testable all children okay so now let's test this out okay so now I can see I can select items that brings up my weapons uh, my uh, items here and the potions and there's my 10 potions and click on this and it should show me my heroes now, at the moment it won't do anything because it just won't do anything um, so what we're we doing in that in the next episode. So the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to just tweak the item window to not say select spell and we'll make this say select item.
and hit compile and save. And so now our UI is in the game, allows us to work it and select allies and enemies for that target. In the next episode, we're actually going to work on the actual items themselves, so then when we use them, they actually have an effect on the target they've been selected with. So join us next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where you can catch all my videos early before anyone else. I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons, YouTube members, and everyone else supporting me. Thank you again so, so much. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.